Green Nutrition, where we talk about a sustainable diet, healthful eating for our bodies and our planet. We'll look at definitions because everybody has a different definition, and I'd like to hear what yours are. Food systems, food production systems, sustainable food systems, and thinking about a sustainable diet. So what is sustainability? Sustainability, a definition, includes meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. A sustainable diet, in, not in terms of keto or low fat and the ability to stay on it, which is a definition that as a registered dietitian I think a lot about, but as someone looking towards the health and long-term sustainability of our planet, a sustainable diet is one in which you make food choices that do maximize your personal health, but minimize the impact on the environment. A sustainable food system is one that provides healthy foods to meet nutrient needs while sustaining a healthy ecosystem. It encourages local production and distribution infrastructure, and it makes nutritious foods available, accessible, and affordable. And it's also humane. It's just, it protects farmers and workers, consumers and communities. If I'm looking for definitions, this is a pretty good one. The question is, how sustainable is it? You see, sustainability is a process. It's not a prescription. It, this, and this process requires social, ecological, and economic dimensions. So <laughs> there is no simple definition. It's a question rather than an answer. And some of the questions that we need to evaluate for sustainable practices include, is it economically feasible? Is it environmentally sound? And is it socially responsible? What are some questions that you might have about sustainability? Let's briefly look at a food system. The food system involves all of these different things. And it has to do with the energy that's used to produce and make the food. So if we start at the base of this pyramid, we have the producers. The producers take the least amount of energy, but they're the most of them. They include things like photosynthetic organisms, plants, algae, that get their energy from the sun. And then as we start to go up this food systems pyramid, we have what are called primary consumers, herbivores, cows, crustaceans, secondary consumers, thems that eats the primary consumers, and tertiary consumers, carnivores that eat other carnivores. Where do you fall on this pyramid? And maybe you fall in different places on different days. Another way to look at this is the trophic levels, Pri the primary producers. It all has to do with your position on the food chain. So let me play you this short video by this guy with a guitar. <laughs> A nuclear reaction happens deep inside the sun Where hydrogen atoms are fused into helium Then their heat and light is radiated into space And 90 million miles of shines upon the Earth's face For every hundred calories that shines upon the sun The calories are green plus triple number only one But every single calorie in ocean hills and plains Will serve as a foundation for a living food chain at the bottom of the food chain are producers like in plants The cells make food from sunlight making use of chloroplasts It happens in the pines and flowers on your windowsill Cause every single green one's got a little chlorophyll Well the next bit of food chain is a primary consumer An herbivore, a cow, a vegetarian baby boomer The primary consumer spends its meal time eating plants it Might be a buffalo or might be an ant each level in a food chain yields only 10% of the former level's energy, you might as well. There are bones and leaves you can't suggest that really make a dent. And don't ignore the weight it costs to metabolic plants. So if your plants are yielding about 100 calories, your yield would only be 10 in the birdies and the bees. 700 calories in algae in the sea, primary consumers equal yield to 17. Some other ways to get food are really out of sight. You could be a predator or be a parasite. 
predator eats me, the parasite at your insides, and if you're a decomposer, you will leave me when I die. And if you know this about food chains, you can really take the cake. When energy goes through, it doesn't last, it dissipates. The nutrients and food chains meet a very different fate. They recycle and they circulate forever, ain't that great? Just remember, there's no beings in this world that live alone. Populations form communities where all to make their home. Though your niche may be determined in the role that you are playing, every creature live or dead is in the food chain. That's a whole song about the different trophic levels, primary producers, consumers, secondary consumers, food chains. It's a very important part of trying to figure out where you want to fit in the ecosystem and what is your impact on the ability to sustain your diet and the environment. We need to look at the food production system as we contemplate sustainability. If we look at the top, we start with farming, gardening, fisheries, wild foods. That's kind of where everything starts, but then it goes to through transformation processing, packaging, labeling, marketing, then down to distribution, wholesale, all the way around till we finally are eating it. And all of these things take energy. What kind of changes can we make to minimize the amount of energy that is spent in the food distribution center? This is what I call an unsustainable food system. And see, the thing is that change begins with knowledge and awareness. Let's try to learn to choose foods that may be produced in a more sustainable way. So we start off by finding out what may not be sustainable using non-renewable fertilizers and pesticides. And then that food and beverage processing, that takes energy, transportation, packaging, fossil fuels. Eating fast food and highly processed food increases the unsustainable food system and places a burden on the global system. Aquatic techniques that are used to harvest fish and seafood are becoming an issue for the environment. Let's start off with learning about where the problem is so that we can make changes. So a sustainable food system could start with food production where we're keeping the where we are considering resource conservation. We try to eat more whole foods. Maybe try a plant-based diet that is augmented with animal foods, looking to find out where those foods are produced and are they being produced in a sustainable way. And these are the kind of things that can lead to a sustainable food system. So if we're thinking about a sustainable diet, Maybe we can start with trying to buy things more local or regional. And the quantity of food that we get, we want to think about what will produce minimal food waste. Can we purchase foods that don't require a lot of processing or packaging? Can we try to support a plant-based diet because it is lower on the trophic levels? All right, we have less energy being lost to the environment when we eat lower on the food chain and we can support a healthy diet. Now I want to put all this in the caveat of that I know that for many of you this is not a time in your life when you can do these kinds of things because honestly some of this stuff really costs money and that's why an important part of developing a sustainable food system is being able to develop one that's affordable. So sustainability is a process, not a prescription. Energy flows through our ecosystem from producers at the base of the pyramid all the way up to tertiary consumers. The demand for processed food has increased with our growing population and lifestyle, which puts excessive demands on our natural resources. And we need to start thinking about making choices that support a sustainable food system. We'll talk about this more in class. Bye-bye.